everybody welcome back to another episode of the nigeria report i'm your host pablo and joining me as always is mr brian shows brian it has arrived it is done we've been talking back and forth about uh the announcement that was being made um but before we get on to the good stuff let's talk about the bad stuff of S sdc see san diego comic-con 2022 and I don't know if we've, I think we've mentioned it before. I think I put out something that we were discussing regarding uh, DC's panel and um, Brian, you said it best. They showed up to a gunfight with a knife. Kevin Feige wasn't playing. And I said to you and, and, and we discussed this before. I don't think people are going to be able to see that one, but because it was too late. Sorry, guys. I'm, bi I'm a busy guy. I'm a busy guy. But uh, more BlackRock, man. No, Henry Cavill. I, th I think I think you were onto something when you said when that Rolling Stone article came out, perhaps that persuaded Henry Cavill to be like, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do this. And although there was many rumors and a lot of disappointment that, that Henry Cavill did not uh, show up, you know, um, you could almost say, and I, I, and I think, and I was listening to some dudes that were doing live stream and they said, listen, the rock is not going to get upstage. If Henry Cavill shows up, the rock who? So you get the rock trying to sort of connect with the audience with that I, i'm pretty sure it was a loki inspired moment he's there shooting this fake lightning stuff yeah it's just whack yo the the rock is just it's all about him the dc panel was all about him no blue beetle no aquaman a movie that's that's done apparently right Oh, yeah. I didn't expect yeah. too much about Blue Beetle, but they've been filming that, correct? Uh, completed filming today, actually. Oh. Tweeted out photos. They're in Puerto Rico. Final scene wrap was today. Even worst. Even worst. I have a theory on that, but certainly that would tell you they had enough footage if they wanted to do a sizzle reel and get it out there. Uh, they were going to do it. I do think they're holding it for fandom, and I don't think it's totally the wrong move in this case uh but we, we, we'll get into it just because of the other stuff but yeah so um listen i don't know what dc is gonna do uh I, i'm you said brian that sashlop has a lot of uh restructuring to do and i and, and clean up of what the remnants of the former dcu yeah. has given us um what were your thoughts on their panel or the lack thereof. Yeah, so let's review let's review the rumor mill versus what actually happened and try to ferret out like what's going on here. So initially, remember we heard there was nothing. Yeah. And that was kind of right. So the stuff I read in terms of if you went to Comic-Con, mm -hmm. there wasn't a lot on the floor. So the, normally there'll be like merch, there'll be like posters and like, you know, kind of physical promotion of upcoming projects. Apparently there was none of that. Like you wouldn't have known there was an Aquaman movie or a Flash movie coming in the next 12 months. So that that part of the rumor proved true. The other part that proved true was that there would not be a panel for Aquaman and Flashpoint because there was a rumor like in the last couple of days that they were going to sneak something in and then they did it. But like when I, th after I, we taped our preview show, the more I thought about it, I was like, they're not risking that. It's too much PR damage, man. Because at fandom, they don't have to, they don't have to answer to a live audience. They don't have to answer to someone going crazy about the issues they've had with Amber Heard or Ezra Miller or whatever. Yeah. So makes they sense. can control the presentation of those yeah. projects. Whereas at Comic-Con, yeah. it gets away from them. So then I was like, all right, that actually makes sense that they would hold that back, even though it's not good for either of those films because of the magnitude of this event. And look, clock's ticking. We're less than, you know, we're less than a year away on both of these. So, yeah. and I kind of, you know, Blue Beetle, I kind of feel like 
we're both really high on it. And like, I almost feel like it's in this case, because it's a little further out. That's the end of next summer that it's going to theaters. That might not be the worst thing to give it like its own shine. And like, that's the kind of thing that's not big enough to where if you put it up against like Black Adam, you might, it might get overshadowed a little too much. So I can kind of see the argument. They think they've got something really good there, which I think they do. That might actually make more sense to send to Fandom. And then you can make a last push, maybe even at like next Comic-Con, which is like a month before it comes out. So I didn't hate that as much. Okay. So you were kind of just left with Shazam and Black Adam. That's it. I almost forgot about Shazam. Look at that. Funny how that keeps happening, right? (laughs) So you're left with these two projects that are coming out in October and December. And yeah, I mean, let's do Black Adam first. I don't want to get on the rocks keys too much because the dude works hard, man. He's trying. Like, he's trying so hard that you can feel the effort through your screen. And that's part of the struggle. Is like, he, there's not a lot, like, he is his own franchise. This is a franchise where there's not a lot of help, right? Like, there's not, it's not like, you know, there's a lot of things that are going great right now for DC. So, like, I think he does feel that sense of, like, I have to overdo this to carry this and like i'm gonna force this and will this into this massive you know groundbreaking i uh, take it in a new direction franchise that he keeps saying you know as i said i sympathize with him i have no questions about his dedication or his desire to do this but with what was shown i just don't feel like the project is getting there i don't feel like it's connecting and exploding in a way that people are like, all right, two weeks before Wakanda Forever, which we'll talk about later, I have to allocate time to see this and maybe see it twice. I just didn't feel that way watching this trailer the same way I didn't feel that way watching the first trailer. Yeah. I mean, did you feel any different? Did this, did that trailer like turn it up? Absolutely not, absolutely not. There was only, uh, shots from the same places just a little more. If you look at the 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 previous the previous trailer, this trailer that they released today were the same, I guess, scenes, same but they pieces. show yes, yeah, same, same, same pieces, pieces. but they sh- they showed a little bit more. That's about it. I think they got a winner in Doctor Fate. Every time I see Pierce and I see the right? costume, and now he see a little bit of work with the special effects. That looks good. I, yeah. I, I think they nailed that. But I don't know. Am I the only one who thinks this looks a little... Yeah, I still think the visuals look very Zack Snyder's to me. I don't know if that's just my bias. I actually went back and watched the Man of Steel tonight just to like compare it. Mm-hmm. There's something about like the graininess, like the color palette, the way they use the lightning, the flight effects, the way the explosions come off. It it's Joan Collette Sarah is the director of this but like it like the way the speed at which he's flying in the action scene very I don't know I just kept getting Man of Steel vibes a little bit in some of these set pieces and I, I don't know that I'm surprised I just wouldn't have thought they would have gone in that direction but it just feels that way to me and and, and I don't know that that's all gonna I don't know that's gonna work to their advantage yeah I mean we sort of got to see, although we haven't seen all of it yet, we still have to see the movie when it comes out and just make a, a sort of firm uh, uh, opinion on the film. And some of the things that got me excited in terms of the, the things that they were working on with flight and visual effects, mm-hmm. and, and that still hasn't resonated with me in terms of making me think, oh, this is something new I haven't seen before in terms of flight. and and. and it just, Brian, I'm going to go see this movie just to see it, to give The Rock a chance. Well, we prove, can't I wouldn't, see it opening night after all. No, 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 no of no, course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go see it, but it's like I'm going to go see it with, with I, I, I'm hoping I'm proving wrong, Brian. I'm hoping I'm proving wrong, but I just don't feel that this movie is going to be great. 
Yeah, I sent you some of the numbers too. I mean, the, 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 the Rock's career, you know, in terms of if I take the Fast franchise out of it, you know, movies that critics have generally responded to, he's never had a movie that was above 80% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, if you buy into that. I mean, the two Jumanji movies were in the 70s. Um, and Central Intelligence, which was the Kevin Hart, you know, buddy comedy, that was in the 70s. But, you know, he's very consistently right around between like 40 and 55%. So kind of tells you like, for every critic that sort of likes it, there's another that doesn't. And like, I watched this trailer and I'm kind of like, these trailers, I'm kind of like, this movie has all the feel of that. This movie has all the feel of there's going to be people who probably like The Rock's shtick. They kind of like his style and like they want to see it in the superhero genre and they'll kind of give it a passing grade. And then I think there's going to be a lot of critics that are like, I have seen all of this before in some other form and it's not any better, even if it's not materially worse. And I'm going to kind of, so that's everything about this kind of points in that direction to me. And I still don't have a sense of like, you know, you have Pierce Brosnan telling you, you have these two paths, right? That you can choose, whether to destroy the world or save it. But I still have no idea like what the stakes are. What exactly is his challenge? I mean, every scene basically is like, hey, yeah, Hawkman, come over here and let me beat on you for a little bit. Like all these other supposed superheroes just, have no chance against him, which is probably fairly accurate, but like yeah. it's up to the creator, it's up to the filmmakers and the writers to create those stakes and create that risk and create that drama around a character this powerful. And if this movie is going to be two hours of The Rock looking menacing and looking hulking in his suit and just like tossing dudes right and left, I don't think that's going to get you a big sustainable audience. Yeah, we, we still don't know who the villain is, but apparently there's been some information regarding that, but they haven't showed it because it's not about him, right? It's about The Rock. So it's just, because oh, this, this, yeah. this, this is the problem. Ahead. This is the problem, Brian. We see this movie and we care nothing about the villain's uh, uh, purpose or his, his, uh, his agenda. We care nothing about it. Yeah. We haven't because we haven't seen anything. All we see is the rock, which is by design. Yeah, and I think that's also speaks that's also speaks to the challenge of when he says, I'm trying to usher in a new era of DC movies. Okay. So that so then I go back to Iron Man One and I say, okay, at the time of Iron Man One, what was my reaction coming out of the theater, not knowing what was gonna come? The next 10 years and i think i can legitimately say like a that movie kind of just like opened my eyes to what was possible with this tone and this character right very just yeah. nolan batman movies, right it was like a positive uplifting kind of you could have some humor but then you could have some cool action and then you kind of tack on the nick fury appearance at the end and you're like we might be uncorking something here, right? That's ushering in an era. I, to your point, I don't feel that with this. This doesn't know, feel I, like a kickoff. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> it's just a rock saying what I do and that's it. <laughs> you know, it, there's nothing here. There's nothing here for me to be like, oh, it's just a, I know people that are excited for this movie. Why? Because they're they're fans of The Rock. That's great. If you're fans of The Rock and you want to see The Rock and Black Adam, fine, great. But in terms of me wanting to see this movie, I only want to see it for the purpose of seeing this movie and see if, it, if it's going to be good or not. I have nothing else that I'm looking forward to. Yeah. And and I, I don't I just don't know what this movie is about. All I know is that it's about the rock <laughs> the black adam is black rock i don't know but brian this is not good this is not good so then he got asked about superman and at this point right so at this point you kind of know cavill's not there his music's not going to hit he's not going to come out they someone asked it. it's a planted question i'm sure mm. and he kind of says like well 
You know, as far as The Rock versus, or sorry, I just slipped. <laughs> <laughs> Brody, it slipped right there. <laughs> um, Black Adam versus Superman. He goes, well, it depends who's playing, playing. Superman, right? Which is clearly like leaving and dangling the carrot that maybe Henry Cavill is still kind of out there. And we talked about it. And if you watch our preview show for this the Comic-Con event, like, one of the things that we ferreted out was a Cavill's contract might have one last appearance in it. So they might. Mm. It. So it does have that feel of like the rock is still working the back channels to try to get what he wants for his sequel mm -hmm. and maybe his credit stinger. Um, but you're clearly not getting that gratification in this movie. Uh, and then you mm. had, you know, you know, had the director saying like black Adam leaves this movie, not knowing who Superman is yet specifically says that. Again, doesn't mean Cavill can't be in the stinger, but he's clearly he's clearly not the villain they're keeping, or not the villain. He's clearly not the opposition they're keeping on the ropes for Black Adam One. Your best case is Black Adam Two, um, and they're still trying to figure out the legality and the contract and all that sort of stuff. But you know, I thought it was my overarching comment to people, and people would know like I'm I'm in the camp. This is going to be a disappointment, both financially, critically. I saw the social media reaction to no Henry Cavill. And it was, was and I just want to tell all you people that feeling you had today of letdown, I want you to bottle that up. So <laughs> I think on October 21st, you're going to feel the same thing when you walk out of the theater. That's my prediction. Yeah, me too. I agree with you 100%. I hope I'm wrong, Brian. Yeah, I hope I'm wrong. We, we this to be good this is not about like us rooting against this movie it's just yeah, yeah. we just haven't seen the reason to believe in it exactly um yeah no no, no back girl no nothing that was just this and shazam which i entirely have no interest in uh I, <sighs> oh i mean that I, let's talk can we talk about it a little bit sure. because you know they put the trailer out this was the first footage and I, there were some things that like stood out and not in a good way. Like? Me. I was shocked they did a montage of the Snyderverse Justice League characters at the start of the trailer. I'm like, as a studio, you guys are doing everything you can to sever your ties. And yet? Why are you putting that footage in there? And like, I noticed very carefully, there's the flash, but you can't see Ezra Miller's face <laughs> and I'm like, you guys are getting in this real habit of showing your heroes with no face. Yeah. Like, this is happening a lot now. And yeah. I'm like, if you're that embarrassed by your heroes, fire oh, everyone and start over. Yeah, exactly. Right? What am I missing here? If, if you are so like, I can't show Affleck as Batman anymore. I can't show Cavill as Superman. Fine. They don't <laughs> really. I mean, You've got a hit piece out on the director. You got Jim Lee saying we're not doing we're not doing any more Snyderverse. Then do that, like yeah. act like that. So that was the number one. Right out of the gate, I'm like, what is this in the trailer? Yeah, I was like, what? Second is, and I texted you this. We got to talk about this. We got to stop giving superpowers to random kids just so they can be a team. And the I'm they did it in Love and Thunder. They're doing it in this movie. I'm over it. I'm over yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Remember what I sent you uh, right after that? What you sent me? Like, it reminded me of, of Syndrome in Incredibles. When everybody has superpower, superpowers, no one will. Oh, uh, I think, no, when everybody's super, no one will be. So, I mean, this... I didn't care for it in the first time when everybody got, or his family got powers. I didn't care for it for the, fir the first time they did it. And now this seems like it's going to be a, a, a regular thing throughout this film. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm just not going to enjoy it. I, I know I'm not going to enjoy it because I don't. I, and I like Shazam. I like Shazam, the character, not right. this version. To me, this is just a silly, goofy version of Shazam. Um. And it's, it's just not my thing. Um, for many people out there who saw the first Shazam that, and, and they really loved it and enjoyed themselves watching it. But so they, they, they loved Thor, Love and Thunder too. So that doesn't say much. Ragnarok, Guardians 2, Deadpool 2. 
but um, it's another movie. I don't know, Brian. I don't think I'm going to probably go see this one. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. You and I have talked about the timing, and I saw this trailer, and I'm like, you're sending that up against Avatar 2? Like, all right. It's coming out two weeks after, correct? No, they're one, they're one two week weeks before. before. One week apart. Oh, wow. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I understand the audience is not 100% overlap, but I have a tough time seeing this movie. I mean, the first one was like 300-ish million global. I'd Which are not numbers. Yeah, like those, those numbers aren't good for a superhero film. Depending on how much they... Yeah, yeah. Depending on how much money they put into this, and I think they probably put more because yeah, you got Helen Moran, you got, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got to give it to those guys over there, Warner Brothers. You have to ask yourself, what the what the hell are these guys doing? But they're, that's what I mean. They're, they're in a rough spot. Like I said, you can kind of tell, like, they're in transition mode. There's a mess. You know, these articles that are out there, read the Rolling Stone piece. I mean, if you've been following anything that would do with that whole saga, like, it's a mess, man. And then, you know, then it's not like the studio's fault that Amber Heard's trial became what it became. It's not the studio's fault that Ezra Miller did all the things they did. Like, right? Yeah. Like, I'm just saying, but it is it is their responsibility to clean it up yeah. from a project standpoint. And I just think, like, you're going to have to tolerate probably at least another year of kind of like the their version of limbo. It's like, these movies have to go out because they put so much money into them, but they yeah. know that they can't stand behind them, you know, full speed because of the PR nightmare that will come with it. So it's kind of like you just take it, you're just trying to minimize the debt. You're you're in damage control. That's what you you're in damage control for at least a year. And then you clear the books and you hopefully kind of get a new, you get your Kevin Feige in there and you can kind of reset the reset the course of the map. That that's kind of how I'm trying to you know, think about it. But in the meantime, that's, you know, in a weird way, that is what puts it on the rock's shoulders, right? Because that is like the Batman's already out, did its job, did its job awesomely well. Like, it is kind of on the rock. He's he's a clean, super clean image superstar, right? Like you they need him to kind of glide things over until they can get the house back in back in order. In order for this movie to be successful, Brian, what does it need to do financially and what sort of uh, Rotten Tomato score would it need to be in order for it to warrant a Black Adam 2? Because I don't think uh, if this movie doesn't perform well, I don't see how you do a Black Adam 2. It's a great question. I mean, I've said the, I've said the over under is 500 million global in terms of what I think it will do. Um, I think, you know, that would be a profitable level, I believe. Like, this is not a 250, 275 Avengers level budget for the film. It's mm -hmm. more, I think it's probably more like a 150 to like 175. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you need you need to get into the 450, 500 range to kind of be safely making some money. Mm -hmm. But I think you're right. If, if you end up in that range, I don't think it's a rubber stamp that you get Black Adam too. I think Black Adam. Yeah. I think I think if you get north of six, you get into the area comparable to where Man of Steel went for its debut. Mm -hmm. You you'd be all right to say like we can do we can do bigger and better than that. It, maybe it is putting Cavill in the second one, but I think that's probably if they can get into the sixes, maybe approach seven. But the problem to me is like to get to that level as a lead off film. You're going to need, like I said, you're literally going to need probably the best critical acclaim of The Rock's professional career as an actor. Yeah. You're going to need Rotten Tomatoes in the 80s. And you're going to need some critics basically saying, I know Wakanda Forever is two weeks later, but you've got to make time to go see this. You've got to have some people saying that. And I just don't know that it's going to be good enough to get there. Yeah. I mean, in order, for me, before we move on to the good stuff, before, listen, the performance of The Rock can't be The Rock's performance. He has to be Black Adam. He has to be a character, a unique character. Yep. Based on what we've seen, Brian, 
recently, just today, after the after Hall H, um, Marvel's uh, Hall H uh, announcement, and the final trailer of Wakanda Forever, <laughs> it's just there's just no comparison. You know, you it's like weeks. You got two weeks. I mean, like we talk about you look at like a big launch right so like love and thunder doc strange 2 these movies this it's not like top gun maverick right like top gun maverick had a really good launch but it's like the fifth biggest launch of the year but because of the buzz it is going to finish as a top 10 movie of all time that's generally not how superhero movies work they mm. come out strong so yeah. for this movie to get to 600 700 million it's probably got to be like 300 plus global in weekend one because yeah, yeah. you figure all right that drops to 150 global in the second weekend all right now i got 450 and what kind of forever is going to steamroll me in no matter what i do in, in that second weekend but at least if i bag 450 i can kind of coast into like 600 and i'm good it's got to come with that if it anything if you see a global launch that's like 200 big big problems big trouble that's a number to watch out for when it um for that weekend a lot to uh digest with regards to that and not a good uh showing for dc not at all especially after seeing what we just seen and brian let's get into can i throw uh, one other question to you just for you sure leave? I was really bummed no animated. I mean, with Cape Crusader out there for next year, I was just bummed we didn't get anything. Marvel did a dedicated animation panel, which wasn't amazing. We'll talk about that a little bit, but like, mm -hmm. I was a little bummed that we didn't get anything on the DC animated side, considering that's typically been a strength for them. And the Batman True. is moving. So there were some announcements for some movies animation. I don't know if you saw there were a bunch of Justice League movies. I think there was a Batman animation movie. Okay, but we didn't uh, get anything on Cape Crusader. Though. No, no, no. Uh, which I hope we see at Fandom. So I'm okay. gonna be really looking out for that when that comes out, and um, and perhaps some progress with Batman, uh, the Batman too. Uh, 